Say this morning is pray always. The Holy Spirit is pleading. Holy Spirit is here pleading with the friends of Jesus, who are also his brethren, to pray always. And he's saying to them that that is what they need every day and every hour. Why must it be their daily and hourly need to pray always? First, so that they can overcome temptation to sin. Secondly, Luke 21, 36. Luke 21, 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Is the reason Jesus Christ is giving to all the saints of God who have been called on this truth to pray always so that they can escape all the things that shall come to pass by making sure they are raptured. And what are those things that are come to pass? The evil that will accompany the great tribulation when the Atlantic Christ is reigning. Because it's a terrible thing to be left behind in rapture to face this great tribulation. Verse 35 verse, of that Saint Luke 21. Verse 35 of Luke 21. For as a snare 
shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. This great tribulation, the evil that will come upon the whole earth, he said to come as a snare. May we not miss the rapture in Jesus' name. So Jesus Christ pleading with his brethren, his friends, who are living in obedience to this truth, that they should pray always so. Because the day will come like a thief in the night when you do not expect. And he said too that you can stand before the Son of Man. You can only stand before the Son of Man when you are raptured. Jesus also emphasized the importance of praying always by giving a parable in Luke 18, 1 to 5. Luke 18, 1 to 5. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me. This widow did not give the judge rest until the judge avenged her of all her adversary. That is, the judge not granted her request because she was troubling this judge all the time and not give her rest. Always going to the judge's house. Avenge me of my adversary. Avenge me of my adversary. Now the judge comes, this summer where they come to this my gate every day, so, eh? I'll be making, let me rest. Let me do what he, what he wants. What is Jesus Christ saying now? He said, if this kind wicked judge, if he do this kind of thing, Don't you think that God, who is full of mercy and compassion, who is your father, not avenge his own elect who have been chosen to this truth or the adversary? Just like I can say, he will avenge them speedily as he cried to him night and day. But the thing with the brother Jesus now be say, he say, when he go come again, will he find a select still in the faith, praying? If you look at verse 8 there. Verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? You know, the spirit is willing to pray, but the flesh is what? And that's what the devil is working upon, upon our flesh. Sometimes we need them to pray, sleep catch us off one day. They look at her, ah, 5 a.m., ah, time don't reach now, now. Then you just mutter a few words, you get up. Now sit down, now they behind them. Let's see what Prophet Isaiah said. Isaiah 62. Isaiah 62. Verse 1. Verse 1. 
For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Prophet Isaiah, he didn't intercede for Jerusalem. And he says, until when I see righteousness springing forth in Jerusalem, when I see salvation burning like lamp, I will not hold my peace. And he said, I will not rest. That was the case of that widow. Who never had her peace. He never gave that wicked your rest. And Prophet Isaiah can advise the watchmen that have been set over Jerusalem. Watchmen are those who have been set over to pray. Where did God advise him now? Look at verse 7. Isaiah 61, 62, verse 7. And give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise. In the earth. The prophet did tell this watchman, give God no rest to. Trouble God where we over this matter. And don't rest until you see your desire by Jerusalem accomplished. Or sit and go say, why is it the privilege is matter? You have been on this matter for many years. Why never answer? And I wrote the truth to your heart now to weaken your faith and to make you to withdraw. This is my advice with Isaiah, they give the watchmen so by Jerusalem. It's for all of us who are choosing to this truth. Not to give God rest until our desires are met. Until our requests are granted. If those desires of us, if those requests of us are in accordance with the will of God, and God will surely grant your petitions, your desires. 4 John 5, 14 to 15. First John 5, 14 to 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. This is the confidence that we have, that when we ask this God, this is our Father who is full of mercy and compassion. Anything we desire, and according with His will, He hear. As long as you are not living in stubbornness to any doctrine of this truth, as long as you are living godly, righteously, and you are asking God according to His own will, He said, "Be sure that that petition shall be granted you." Even though the answer no quick come, wait patiently for it. Because it shall surely come. And it will come at its own appointed time. Because God has a timing for answer to every prayer request of his children. Your own timing might be different. My own time might be different. Everyone's time is different. Your own might take two years. My day three years. Your own might take a month. Or even a week. Even instantly. And what you must know is this. Go answer us our prayers. Of his children. 
The answer can either be, yes, have your request. I grant you your request. The answer can be, wait, my son, my daughter. My son, my daughter, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This other thing we will ask, I will add them to you. And how do you seek God? See the kingdom of God and the session. If by obeying this truth, all other things will be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. My son, my daughter, I they hear your petition now. I hear your cry. I will answer. But wait. I want you to seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This other thing that I've been asking for for many years, I will add them to you. I'm working upon your soul first, which is important thing than any earthly thing you can gain in this world. Because God is interested that no child of his should miss heaven. And whatever is that thing that will make you to miss heaven, it will delay it. Or you might not even grant it. You might say, no, I'm not giving you. Because this thing you are asking for, it's not in concordance with my will. When you get this thing, you are going to consume of your, upon your lust. So I'm not, I will not give you. James 3, 3. James 4, verse 3. Ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. He loves you. And he said, no, you, you are asking, but you don't receive it. Because you consume upon your own lust. And it's detrimental to your soul. That can be another answer. The other answer can be, I have a better thing I want to give to you than what you are asking for. Because I'm able to do more than what you are asking for or more than what you think. So take a better option than what you are asking for. These are the answer God a give person. Either have your request wait and seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, I will add them to you at my own appointed time, or no, because it will damn your soul. And if for your own good, God shall it profit you if you gain all the things you do and suffer the dust of your soul. So God is in trying more your soul. When Apostle Paul was praying to, to Jesus that he should remove the turning flesh away from his life, that he should depart from him, look, I say no. Let's read it. 2 Corinthians 12. 2 Corinthians 12. Yes, verse 8. Verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. He said, For this thing, three times, he, Paul will be saying, Once he pray, instant thing they happen. Yeah, this is his own case. A messenger of Satan was buffeting Paul. And he said, Jesus, remove this tongue in my flesh. Let it depart from me. Just I say, No. Why he say no? Verse 7 now. Verse 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Apostle Paul, God gave him abundance of revelation. 
God lifted him into the heavens. He heard the tongue of angels. Language could not understand. This thing could make Paul to be very proud. I know one may Paul finish in working and go me seven. He said, Paul, I will not leave. Because if I leave, eh, he will be puffed up with pride because of this knowledge. Because Jesus Christ has said, except a man is converted and be like a little child, or except a man humble himself, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. So this turning effect, messenger said, was a humbling effect upon Paul. So it never removed that turn in the flesh. But he said, Paul, I will give you abundant grace. That way people will be able to bear this turn in the flesh and the end make heaven. That's the ultimate goal of Christianity. If you're coming to church, it's not to make heaven. You better sit down too. And the little way go make you enter heaven and be this mystery of the kingdom of this world of the way you hear so. If you say too hard, I know if you continue, sit down in your home. This truth, now be Jesus. Now you go meet on the day of judgment. Then you are running away from the truth. Matthew 18, verse 4. Matthew 18, verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Paul is one of the greatest today in the kingdom of heaven. He did heaven today. If a true church or a child of God does not want the gates of fear to prevail against her, the church, or him or her, that child of God, then that true church must pray without ceasing. That child of God must pray without ceasing. Because Satan is restless. You know the tie, it's a spirit being. And they look for every available opportunity to get you. Now we're tired because we're seeing the flesh. That's why a true church must do what? Pray without ceasing. Now the ceaseless prayer of a true church, now the day effective, now the day effectual. And now they are very much. More than the individual prayer of members of that true church. Because two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Ecclesiastes 4 9. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9. Two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Now, this is a prayer of the early church. Now, I see Peter from being killed back in Herod. As the early church was praying ceaselessly, God sent an angel to the prison to bring Peter out. Even though Peter was praying alone inside that prison, but at a point he was tired, he couldn't sleep off. But the early church didn't sleep. We were praying. And so, as many as are in prison house of Satan because of sin, this is a prayer of a true church. We bring such out of the prison house of Satan. Many believers in Christ, they are in prison house sitting today, they are unknown to them. Isaiah 42, verse 22. Isaiah 42, verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled 
they are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth. For a spoil, and none saith, restore. Those who are in prison are Satan. This I who has need a host. It affects every area of her life. It affects their finances. It affects their progress in life. Spiritually, you are not growing. Now, prison has said, and now you did. Upon the word of two days here, you are not growing. No fruit to show. Until you are brought out of that prison. Before you can begin to flourish like the palm tree. As they obey this truth. Before your life can be to blossom like the Garden of Eden, as they obey this truth. The prayer of the true church, as they pray for all members of the church, as many will they pray our Satan, God will deliver them one by one. As I said, my house shall be covered. Answer prayer. And so there are always watchmen in a true church, especially this church, who cease not to pray night and day for members. So this prayer life of any church of a child of God is very important. Even though when we put on the whole armor of God as we are commanded. You still need to be clad with the armor of prayer. We Paul talk for Ephesians 6, verse 18. Ephesians 6, verse 18. Mm. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That's what Paul is advising. He don't talk of armor. He says, put on the whole armor of God. That we will stand against the wise of the devil. He said, put on your helmet of salvation. Put on your girdle of truth. He said, above all, pray what? Always. That's the key. And when the prayer life of a true church or a true child of God is weakened, or taking away. The gates of faith will prevail against that true church. Enemies will prevail against that child of God and that true church. You have opened the door for enemy to get you. Now, now Satan weakened that prayer life. Oh, now I take away that kill just to get you. Exodus 17. Let's read an example there. Verse 11. Exodus 17. Verse 11. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. The war between the children of Israel and the people of Amalek. Anytime when Moses' hands are up in prayer, they are always overcoming. But anytime we hands come weak, you know if they pray again, Amalek will prevail against them. They are enemies. That is the battle we are facing. So if you don't want enemies to prevail against you, if you don't want the gates of hell to prevail against you, then pray without what? Season. Let's look at him 311. Make we see what the Holy Spirit talk for him 311. Him 311, he says, verse 3, restraining prayer, we cease to fight. That is, when we withdraw or refrain from prayer, cease their prayer, or praying always, we are we're drawing from battlefield. We are withdrawing already from spiritual warfare against Satan and his demons. I 
And he says, when the devil sees the wicked child of God kneel down to pray, he go do it. In. He go down the fear. Two things we eat it and the fear. The sword of the spirit. That's when you throw the word of truth around. Then prayer, you go flee. That's why a prayerful true church is very good for gates of hell to come in. A prayerful child of God. Satan go to fear them. Because Satan know they pray. But he go in the co Bible. Satan know the scripture. The only thing we know they deny to pray. So if you see from praying, you are not different from the devil, Satan, we know they pray. He will capture you quickly. What you must know is that Jesus loves to hear the prayer of his children. He loves to hear the prayer of a true church. Because their prayer is his delight. He did enjoy them. He built a sweet sabbath, sweet odor before Christ. Proverbs 15, verse 8b. Proverbs 15, verse 8b. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. The prayer of the righteous nation who keep the truth and be upright. The prayer of a true church who preaches the truth, not be the upright church. He said, their prayer is delight. He wants to hear them all the time. But the prayer of the wicked who are not obeying this truth, who are stubborn to the doctrine of this truth, he says it's an abomination to him. If you look at that 8a, eight, eight or that same proverb. Proverbs 15, 8a. 15, 8a. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. Look at Proverbs 28, verse 9. Proverbs 28, Proverbs verse, 9. 28 verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. You know, some people just come to church. They preach church like this. They just sit down. The two way they come, they turn their ear against that truth. This one not concern me. What is he talking about? Can, can this be possible? Ah, me, I know if you obey this one. No. Get that CBO. You see, whatever prayer they are praying is what? The only prayer we go hear from some people is a prayer of repentance. And if the Lord God once we reawaken his sense, his chosen ones from their spiritual slumber, he can raise up a storm against his child, against a true church, out of love for them. You know how I many they perish, you know how I many sit and get them. So insect will raise up storm to tie you up into prayer. We shall read an example in the Bible to buttress what Holy Spirit is saying to us this morning. Psalm 107. Psalm 107. 25 to 30. 25 to 30. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired heaven. These sailors, in this ship, they were sail sailing 
where they see. Now go by and say, raise all that storm. To me, that what? To call upon the Lord God. He said, they read to and fro like a drunken man. Trouble don't come now. He said, Jesus can come calm the storm. Abi, they were not happy. That's what God does to a true church or a children. The storm is not to destroy them. No. Now raise up, raise up. To me, to cry to You want to hear your cry. You don't sleep. <laughs> you don't quiet for some time. You have not been crying to me as you used to cry to me in prayer. So I will allow this more trouble to stay up and pray. They will not stop this storm. So let us understand this God we will serve. His thoughts towards us, they are not thoughts of evil. They are thoughts of what? Peace. When it's time or it's time, it's for our good. Till they are waking up from our sleep. But we shall not be drowned in that storm. We shall not perish in that storm. By the time we cry to you don't achieve the people we want to achieve for your life. And if you are wise enough, we're going to cry. We won't stop. Prayer, we always give the children of God rest from all fear. You give them rest from their sorrow. And rest from the sin where they weigh you down. Do those sin. Isaiah 14, verse 3. Isaiah. 14. Verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. It is only prayer that will give every child of God rest from their fears, from their sorrow, from the hard bondage of sin where Satan they take torture and torment you. Only prayer. Finally, look at what Holy Spirit says in First Peter four seven. First Peter, chapter four, verse seven. Yes. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober, and watch unto prayer. He said, "The end of all things is what? It's at hand, though." The world will soon come to an end, though. Be there for sober. Live a sober life, a godly life, righteous life. And watch unto prayer. So that you will not miss the rapture. So you will not be left behind to face the Antichrist. Be sober. And it's only prayer that can make you sober and live godly. Now he will give you rest from all the cares of life. Philippians 4, verse 6. Philippians 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. 